Murray Goodwin scored his second hundred in his last two LV County Championship matches for Glamorgan as they took the lead at the halfway stage of their match at the Spitfire Ground St Lawrence in Canterbury against Kent. Goodwin, who hit his maiden ton for Glamorgan in his last match against Gloucestershire, restarted his innings on 35 out of his side's 155 for four and he was soon adding to that. Kent had the edge, however, when Jim Allenby nicked Charlie Shrek behind in the morning's fourth over to go for 25 at 168 for five. Goodwin, now aged 40, is just finding his form after a sluggish start to his Glamorgan career. This shot, which brought the Zimbabwean his seventh four, took him to the 50 mark for the fourth time this season. This particular one had occupied 94 balls. He and Mark Wallace then ensure that their side dominated the remainder of the morning session. They defended manfully against a largely well-disciplined attack, but when they were given balls to hit, they hit them extremely well as they began to once again restore parity in this contest, one which had ebbed and flowed between the rain on the first day. These two were still there at lunch, having carried the total to 242 for five, with Goodwin now into the 90s. And he soon turned that into his 100 early on in the afternoon session, it was another terrific innings, of course, and it had taken him 190 balls to get there, 14 of which he'd hit for four, including the ball that took him to three figures for the 69th time in his illustrious career. He's clearly hitting form at a good moment for his adopted county after a year or two in the doldrums. Wallace was also beginning to look very good, here pulling Mitch Claydon for a six as he took the partnership with Goodwin to 105 for the sixth wicket. But Wallace was dismissed in the same over as the Durham Loney collected his first wicket for Kent. The Glamorgan skipper trying to repeat the shot, but this time finding Ben Harmison instead of clearing the boundary rope. Bowler and fielder then combined again as Graham Wagg drove on the up and straight to Harmison in the covers, a shot the batsman wasn't too happy about. Goodwin was still there, however, and he earned his side a third batting bonus point by taking the total beyond 300. By now, he was unleashing all the shots which have helped him score an incredible 22,500 runs in a first-class career which dates all the way back to 1994. He was finally out here for a sensational 136 as he drilled a drive off Shrek into the hands of Sam Northeast in the covers. He went with his side on 315 for eight. But still, Kent couldn't finish off the innings. Dean Kosker and Michael Hogan added 23 more runs for the ninth wicket before the latter lost his leg stump to Callum Haggett, who now had four wickets in the innings for the first time in his career. Walking wicket Michael Reed then frustrated Haggett at Al by blasting his way to a career-best 27, with five fours included, only to finally be dismissed slightly unfortunately as he was given out LBW to Claydon, who began his Kent stint with three for 85. Haggart claimed four for 94 as Glamorgan were all out for a very handy 378. The home side made a steady start to their reply until, with the total on 21 in the sixth over, North East followed a ball from Wag and nicked it to Allenby in the slips. In spite of that wicket, the Glamorgan attack was a little wasteful at times as Rob Key and Daniel Bell Drummond brought up the 50 in the 11th over. But perhaps the young batsman got carried away with the excellent run rate as he then clipped a leg stump half volley from Reed straight to Ben Wright at mid-wicket after contributing a speedy 16. Kent do have a habit of losing their wickets in clusters and this day was to be no different. On 23, Key went in an almost identical fashion to Bell Drummond, Hogan the bowler this time. And the inform Australian then had Brendan Nash caught behind for four to leave Kent in some trouble on 65 for four. That was Hogan's 36th championship wicket of the summer, putting him on top of the second division charts with both the now departed Trent Coatland and Alan Richardson. Harmison and Darren Stevens then saw out the next 15 minutes, which is all we got before bad light intervened. It was, though, still a very good day for the Welsh County, who now go into the second half of this match as favourites. Kent will resume on the third morning on 73 for four, and that leaves them 305 runs behind and needing a further 156 to avoid the follow-on.